Hello, I'm George Lewis. I'm a cardiologist and a physician, and this is part of my series of web talks on various health issues. And one question I frequently asked is, Doctor, do I really need to take these statin drugs? Because people know that I look at not only conventional, but also complementary medicine. Are they really miracle drugs that are going to save the world, or are they a poison that are being, is being inflicted upon us by a greedy pharmaceutical industry? And what I hope in the next 10 minutes is to give a reasonably balanced view. Why is the medical profession so positive about it? Why is the pharmaceutical industry so ecstatic about them? Why do many alternative practitioners feel they are so toxic they should be thrown away and never used again? And more importantly, what on earth should the poor patient think or do? And as in most debates, this truth on both sides, and we need to take a balanced approach. There's no doubt the pharmaceutical industry sees statin as a huge money earner. These drugs have saved many, many lives, but they do have significant side effects and they have killed quite a number of patients. But this applies to almost every drug we have in medicine that actually works. So who should and who should not be taking them? We need to get rid of the hype, the financial benefits, and also the scaremongering, and just look at the actual facts. First of all, why statins came into being. Cardiovascular disease is the major killer in the Western world and gradually now into the Eastern world. And we've known for some time that people with high cholesterol levels have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, so it seemed logical to lower the cholesterol, and doing that should reduce heart disease. So the pharmaceutical industry set to work to find drugs that would lower cholesterol, and they found a number. And all of these seem to do the right things. They lowered the cholesterol, they lowered the triglycerides, they raised the good HDL cholesterol. But apart from niacin, they did not reduce heart attacks, stroke, or death at all. So maybe just changing the cholesterol doesn't stop heart disease, and that's the way we felt, until along came the statins, which are a totally new group of drugs. They block an enzyme called HMG CoA reductase, which is in the cholesterol production pathway. That's cholesterol down the bottom there, and the statins block that enzyme up there. They were first discovered in Japan when they found some organism that produced this enzyme to defend themselves, and Merck Sharp and Dome saw the possibility of these to lower the cholesterol, and they created a number of drugs, levastatin, lovastatin, and simvastatin, and did very nicely, thank you, out of it. So now the pharmaceutical companies started creating their own Me Too products, which were similar, but maybe had slightly different product properties, or were more powerful. So what do the statins do? First of all, they lower the cholesterol, but so do other drugs. But they have other actions as well. By blocking that enzyme up there, they stop blood from clotting in veins, they reduce heart rhythm problems, they affect the blood lining of the blood vessels, making it stronger, they have an antioxidant effect, and we know that oxidized LDL is the major component of heart disease. They have an anti-inflammatory action, and anti -an inflammation seems to be important in heart disease, and they also seem to stabilize plaques of cholesterol, which block the arteries. So they do a lot more than just simply lowering cholesterol. They are probably the most successful drugs of all times. No drug has had more studies to try and show their benefits. And in nearly every trial we've done, there's been a 20 to 30% reduction in heart attacks, stroke and death on those patients taking statin drugs. And they looked at other effects, improved bone formation, reduced blood pressure, reduced heart failure, cancer, dementia, venous clots, a suspicion of these, but certainly by no means proven. But nevertheless, there seems to be almost an attitude in medicine that everybody should be on a statin drug unless there's a good reason why not. But certainly statins should be given uh, now given to people with high cholesterol, family history, diabetes and stroke, and then along came the Jupiter trial. Nothing to do with the, site, with the planet, but it's a certainly an enormous trial, just like it's an enormous planet. In the Jupiter trial, they found that people with normal cholesterol also benefited from being on a statin. So who shouldn't be on a statin? Some people even suggested that children with a family history of high cholesterol should start taking a statin. And people are talking about a poly pill, where everybody over the age of 40 should take this pill irrespective of what's wrong with them, and one of the parts of the poly pill will be a statin drug. But fortunately, in all situations, there are people saying, well, ho, slow down, let's just make sure that we're getting this exactly right. Is there a downside to these drugs? And on the cover story of, new, of uh, Business Week, it said, for many people, cholesterol drugs may not be doing any good. And there have been articles in many journals and papers all around the world. There is definitely a downside, and some very impressive people have been writing articles and books on the downside of the statin drugs. Just like all drugs, statins do have a downside and toxic effects. They cause liver damage in up to 3%, changes in the enzymes, and long-term liver damage in 1 to 2 people per million take the drug. Muscle damage is the big worry. Aching and sore muscles in up to 7% of people 
damage we can actually measure up to 0.2% and severe disease in four people per 100,000. It's suspected that they may have nerve effects in some people with tingling, weakness and pains, but that hasn't been proven. It's very hard to detect mental, to measure mental function, but many people, or a number of people, believe their memory is not as good as it used to be. Their thinking is slowed and they're possibly more depressed since being on the statin drugs. And maybe they affect heart failure as well. So when you see all those, you could say, how could a drug possibly cause so many changes? Who would want to take a drug that could do all of these things? And most importantly, what should I or my family do? Now, every drug causes side effects. And our bodies have been developing over millions and millions of years. All of our organs stand sitting there, working away together like a magnificently tuned orchestra. And inside all of those organs are biochemical pathways which make the system go. And this is a very simplified picture of some of those metabolic pathways. These all work together as a perfect team to grow, to keep us well, to fight disease, and to repair damage. And then we introduce drugs which screw up this perfect biochemistry inside. We put drugs inside and they obviously are going to make changes not only where we want them but also elsewhere. And the satin drugs block the cholesterol pathway there. But our nerves and our brain and our muscles and our liver and all of our tissues need all of these compounds in addition and particularly we need cholesterol for our cell walls and for our hormones. So it's hardly surprising that statins, by blocking the production of all of these compounds, can cause harm as well as good. So what does the patient do? Don't go there. Don't go there. Fortunately, the solution is really quite simple. Statins benefit many people and save many lives. The statin side effects are actually quite easy to detect. You either get aching muscles, you mentally aren't as good as you think you were before, you may get pins and needles, and you can see changes on the blood test. The side effects and toxic effects are almost all reversible, so when you find them, you simply stop taking the drug. So my advice to myself, my patients, my friends, and my family is if you're at high risk of having heart disease, take a statin. 80% of people will have no side effects at all. Get your doctor to check at six weeks and at six months, and if you get any side effects, simply stop taking them. And also take coenzyme Q10, which I'll talk about in a minute. If your risk is low, do not take a statin. Take other nutritionals, which will help your body much better than the statins. And don't take a statin for reasons other than heart disease. The question is, how do you know you're at high risk of having heart disease? Because you do benefit in all the major studies. Taking statin reduced heart attack or stroke by 20 to 30%. So if you have a 50% chance of having one of these conditions, then 10 to 15 people in 100 will be alive and well by taking a statin. That's all those people there in 10 will be alive and well if they take a statin. That person may be somebody's daddy, somebody's mummy, or somebody's partner. So we doctors really can't ignore these figures and the misery and suffering they can avoid if we prescribe a statin to our patients. And it would be unethical for a doctor not to offer a statin to patients at high risk of having heart disease. People at high risk, if you've got proven artery disease, you had a heart attack, angina, an angiogram, leg artery disease or a stroke, or if tests show you've got definite artery disease, or if you've got a family history of high cholesterol, hypercholesterolemia, and heart disease, and you yourself has got a high cholesterol, then probably you should be taking a statin. If you're not at high risk, the benefits are exactly the same, 20 to 30% fewer events and death. But if you look at the odds, if you've only got a 1% risk of having a heart attack, then statins will reduce that by 10 to 20%, which is 0.2 to 0.3 percent. So you'll have to treat a thousand people to stop one, two, or three people having heart disease, or death, or a stroke. There are better ways than that. Just a couple of notes. To confirm heart disease, the best tests we have are an exercise ECG, but I think the best probably is a calcium CT scan, which I'll talk about in another talk. Statins block many compounds production of cholesterol, but they also block something called coenzyme Q10, which is absolutely essential for energy production inside our cells. If you're taking a statin, you must take good coenzyme Q10, and it may well reduce some of the side effects. And some people take red rice to lower cholesterol because it's natural. In actual fact, red rice contains a very primitive form of statin and probably is not as good or as safe as a statin drug. So red rice 
is not the answer if you don't want to take a statin drug. So in conclusion, if you're at high risk, take statins. You and your doctor should check for side effects. If they develop, simply stop taking the statin. Take coenzyme Q10. If you're at low risk, don't take statins and use other preventive therapies, which we'll talk about in other talks. Thank you for listening.